you never satisfied with gadgets. Can aliens hear, first of all? So many different levels of streaming. I use... Uh, Mostly I'm in the studio. In the studio we have a JBL M2s and so we love listening to it in the studio because it's you can listen to it loud and with full quality and and it's also soundproof so we don't have any disturbances. So mostly it's a studio where we have Logic or Pro Tools playing the soundtrack or anything. Even even the when for voting for the Academy also we get a lot of international CDs and streaming things through Apple TV mostly. At home, what speakers? Um, in the studio, my home studio, everything is JBL. JBL M2s? Yeah. At home, I don't listen too much. It's the smaller, again, JBL because it's free. <laughs> the JBL Bluetooth speakers, yeah. Uh, uh, I'm the ambassador for JBL, so. Can aliens hear, first of all? <laughs> Let's assume they could hear. Oh. Very deep question. Mm. Maybe the Azan. Stevie Wonder. Because um, we, I spent around four hours with them last year. And he's again invited me to come and jam, so I'm looking forward. And this time I'll definitely have dinner with him. Vinyl maybe? Because of nostalgia and because you can see physically something is moving. <laughs> yeah. But uh, that said, uh, don't you think streaming is a lot more convenient and yeah, I think streaming is a very uh, too wide a term because there is so many different levels of streaming. And so that's one of the reasons why we are trying to see whether we can have the proper encoders on streaming servers where you can get high lossless sound coming out rather than compressed, you know. Uh, a lot of the, the soul of the music goes off when it's compressed. Especially when you take strings and all those beautiful acoustic things, it's, you see that certain, certain molecules of music is missing in it and it's, it's got a hole in it, but then you feel that it, everything is there, but it's not there. <laughs> so it'll get there because of the speed of internet and with this level of technology coming in. Uh, there's so much of feedback, good and bad, but I tend to like the ones which uh, um, when people get a sense of hope and people get a sense of escape into another realm of horizon or another hemisphere, I feel uh, deeply grateful because that is my intent. You're never satisfied with gadgets. The gadgets is like insatiable because you get a phone and then there's an update. You get a computer, there's an update. So I'm looking forward to the cheese creator, the, the big Mac Pro. And because we can have like six layers of 4K streaming without going proxies. So it's interesting to uh, do creative ideas on the fly. Actually, it's become, um, initially I used to have uh, a compass, 
a stopwatch, uh, a voice memo recorder, um, a metronome, and all these things are now integrated in the phone. So in a way, it's a blessing to have a phone. But the only problem with the phone is the battery. You know, when you get an idea, then you shows like 0.1 percent remaining, and then half the idea is gone, and it it switches off. So it's a blessing and a curse. <laughs> I use uh, Logic Pro, Pro Tools, and sometimes Ableton, uh, sometimes the Kima sound designing software, and um, Paul Stretch. Then on the phone, I use uh, I Lahera. I use. Uh, mm, other granular things. So, um, as you know, first for any tune, you just make a tune first, and you have an intention of what feeling you need to um, convey, and then write lyrics to it. It becomes a song. And then we do uh, according to the movie situation. We do. Interludes. Those interludes are then recorded with live instruments. Then it's mixed. So we split the sound so that it becomes more um, in atmos. And so we send the ambience mostly to the surrounds and we give the bass and main voice comes on the center speaker. And then the stereo spatial pads and everything, strings, everything comes from the studio, left, right. So there's a lot of work actually splitting it and then finally find, listen to it in a lower volume. Because sometimes when you do all this, the integrity of the song goes off. It becomes all over the place. See whether the integrity of the song is still there or has become too wild and so on. So this is the process and then we encode it with Dolby's Atmos. And in this case of bringing Atmos to stereo, then you reverse code it, reverse code all that, those things into stereo. So a normal stereo is different and the Dolby Atmos encoded stereo is different. Okay, when you talk about uh, flat screen TVs, you know, we ha used to have this big boxes cathode ray tubes and, and we used to watch on that. Now we have 4K and 8K flat screens. So would you go back to that? You want. So you want the clarity, you want the next level of visual thing. So same way in audio, um, when there is an improvement, you don't want to go to the basic ones. You want uh, that clarity to come in, you want your music to be streamed in that way where you can experience it in Better, better quality, not with distortion and lot compressed audio, what MP3 used to do. It uh, just used to take something, then kill all the dynamics of a... Yeah, I think the commitment of any brand um, shows, you know, the commitment of them doing sound They've been here for decades and it's only getting better. And it takes courage to do something new, to change people, to adapt. So to, to change all these theaters to Atmos took them you know, probably 10 years and they've, they've successfully come, they've been triumphant in that and change the way we experience music is very, very important in theaters because we need to pull people. Why should they come to the theaters? Because they all have great big TVs there and great sound there. But it has to be greater here. Mm -hmm.